a sense of uh, who's in the room and what you're in. You're, what you're, and we'll hear later about what you're thinking and feeling. So first, uh, to inform you what some of the activities that are happening at the TTC in the, in the domain of customer service, the continuing journey, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the, the TTC's recently appointed Chief Executive Officer, Andy Byford, and its recently appointed uh, Chief Customer Officer, Chris Upford. All right, so Andy, over to you. Okay, thanks, Dan. And um, first up, Gary, thank you so much for uh, uh, inviting us to come up here. We are honored to be at your beautiful campus. It really is quite impressive, actually, when you uh, drive around. We came here, a couple of us came here uh, on the bus, on the 96 rocket, and seeing the campus, uh, it really is a beautiful facility you've got here. So it's great to be here. Um, thanks, everyone, for, for coming. We, we're always a bit nervous about these things before they kick off. You think, will people actually turn on? So it's great to see such a great turnout. Uh, and I'll just echo Karen's uh, comments, actually, about how grateful we are to the TTC staff who've given up their time to come and set all this up. So a few thank yous, first of all. So, um, as Dan said, I'm the newly appointed CEO. Uh, it's an absolute honor and a privilege to be asked to lead the TTC. It's a system that I always wanted to work for, actually, uh, during my time in England and uh, more recently in Australia. Um, having a Canadian wife, which I do, I've been coming to Toronto for years, and it was always a system that intrigued me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so A, to work for the TTC, B, more importantly, to actually get the opportunity to lead it and to take it to the next level uh, is something that A, I don't do lightly, and B, I'm intensely proud to do uh, because it's all about the customer, as Chris will say in a moment, uh, and what we really want to do for you, our riders, and for stakeholders, and for people who pay our wages, ultimately, we want to transform the TTC and modernize it from top to bottom, which is not going to happen overnight. It's going to be probably a three to five year journey, uh, but what we're about is a transforming both the look and the feel of the service that you guys pay for, uh, and we feel that's only right. So um, in the next three to five years, you're gonna see new uh, streetcars downtown, you're gonna see uh, extensions to the network, new uh, rocket trains on the Young University Spadina line, the Spadina extension, of course, and you know, it's great to see uh, that work progressing here. Um, a whole bunch of things, a new ticketing system, which Chris will talk about in a moment. So a lot of the uh, actual equipment and the, and the kit that you use, the, the vehicles that you use, will be completely transformed. But where I'm coming from is it's not good enough to just uh, renew the uh, equipment that you, rock, that you ride on, the vehicles that you ride on. We have to transform the, the way you feel treated as a customer. So uh, we're embarking upon a top-to-bottom modernization of the TTC. It's as simple as that. Uh, and it needs to start from a philosophy that is customer first. Um, uh, first and foremost. Everything that we do will be built around the customer. We put the customer at the center of everything we do. So um, that's easy to say. You'll judge us on our actions over the next months uh, and years. Uh, safety will always be put before production. Obviously, uh, I'm uh, only too aware of the incident that happened here, and I'll say some more about that in a second. But also, as part of our philosophy, we want to be confident as a company. We want to be open. And we want to be dynamic, in other words, not bureaucratic. We've been accused in the past of being a very stuffy, um, almost introspective, almost secretive organization. And that's got to change, and that is going to change. And we want to be receptive to new ideas uh, and listen and learn from our mistakes. Uh, so one of the reasons for having an event like tonight is exactly for those reasons, okay? We've said that we want to be more transparent and open. Uh, we didn't used to do this kind of thing, now we do. This is the second of the events that we've had. And so we genuinely do want to hear your views. Um, we'll be honest, if we've, if we've made a mess of something, we'll be the first to put our hands up. Uh, but it's also not about just downtown. There's far too much focus on just downtown Toronto. So here we are tonight. We're also going to go to Etobicoke and Scarborough. Uh, so you're going to see a lot more of us as a senior team. I'm determined that we all have that more modern look at your, your university. Um, I guess the point I'd make is we have a long history of working with you and your university. We've had um, a lot of work that's been done in the past around improving transit, the busway uh, that went in November 2009, um, and also just increasingly working with you, working with people like Gary and the, uh, the uh, management team here at the university to, uh, in to tackle an ever-increasing demand. I mean, there's huge numbers at this university, and we want to make sure that you're given uh, the, the service that you uh, require and that you demand. 
Now, obviously, the construction has had a huge impact upon your daily lives. We do appreciate that. Uh, I'm sorry for that disruption. It will be worth the wait, and I'll show you a picture in a moment of what the station is that you're going to get. Um, and we have tried to mitigate that disruption uh, by a number of measures, and you can see them uh, behind me on the board. Uh, you've just had an increase in service just a few days ago on the 196 A and B. Um, and we've also put supervisors on site to just make sure the buses don't bunch up and that they, do, that they uh, leave punctually and that they leave uh, when they should do and we're not leaving people behind. It may not be perfect yet, it probably isn't, and I'd like to hear your feedback on how it's going when we come to questions. Um, we've also got police uh, duty at the, uh, the various intersections where there's uh, disruption um, and traffic uh, and construction work going on, again, with a view to try to make buses work that uh, much more uh, easily. The construction is going well. We're, we're here to answer questions on that. We've got our um, senior project director uh, sitting in the room. Um, it will transform your journeys to study, okay? It's a, uh, the, the whole Spadina extension will be worth the wait. Um, when, you, when it opens, you will, I, I'm sure it will have been worth the wait because uh, we don't need to have this huge fleet of buses then. You're going to have what will initially be the world's newest railway with uh, state-of-the-art trains, state-of-the-art stations, a brand new facility. Um, obviously, the accident happened. It's a terrible thing that happened, and particularly for you guys working here and studying here, it must have been traumatic. Um, and I can tell you now, we have absolute focus on safety with the contractors that we're working with. Uh, we have told them that their safety record isn't good enough, uh, and we are micromanaging them to make sure that we never have an incident like that again. So there's a map of the, uh, the site, the work site there in the blue. You can see where the, what we call the TVM, which is the tunnel boring machine, went in. Uh, the uh, item there, the big orange or pinkish blob in two, is where the station will be. So you're going to get a station right in the middle of your campus. Um, and then we've got a number of other things uh, shown up where we're digging shafts and where there's other excavation work going on. So it's actually very difficult to build a station and to build a subway on a working site. If it's a greenfield site, it's that much easier. Uh, but at the end of the day, you guys deserve to have a uh, rapid transit system, so please bear with us while we uh, build the new, system, the new service. There's a, uh, an aerial shot of the work site in February 2012, so you know, you're very familiar with that. Lots of disruption, lots of mess. But it will be worth it because this is what you're going to get. Um, so this is a vision of the future, folks. This is the new station that's going to be here, uh, and that's the main entrance from the common. So uh, it is going to be worth the wait. We do appreciate the uh, disruption that you're having to put up with, uh, but that will be a beautiful station once it's done, and it will transform your journeys to work, and rightly so. Okay, so I'll hand over to Chris. <laughs> In quite a few cases, you have to go to the unpaid side in order to have a look at the map. Uh, actually, that's a pretty good question uh, and some good feedback. We'll have a look at it. Uh, obviously, there's a cost to any of these things, but and we want to do it properly. I don't want to see maps just stuck onto the wall because otherwise they'll get ripped off or they'll look scruffy. So we need proper uh, notice cases. Uh, but I think it's a good idea. Let's have a look at it. Um, second one, uh, and incidentally, all of these points that you raise, by the way, we will we will post uh, proper. Uh, responses. So once we, when we say we'll take it away, we will give you a proper response. Um, elevators losing braille buttons. Well, um, that's a very good point actually you raise. And we've just done, thanks to these guys, uh, our colleagues on ACAP, we've just done a survey, or a survey has just been done of every single elevator on the um, uh, TTC network. One, I want the uh, elevators to work, it's one of our key performance indicators, in other words, it's something that we're going to track, uh, and we, we, are, we are determined to get the availability up on elevators. Um, but thanks to the fantastic work that you guys have done, um, the, uh, we've now got a comprehensive survey of every elevator, so we know what the deficiencies are, and clearly we need to fix them. So things like missing barrel buttons, that's just not good enough, that's what I would call a basic. Uh, we're, we're going to have a look at what we can do to rapidly Im improve uh, the, uh, all of the deficiencies. Every single deficiency that's been found, we intend to fix. Uh, next one was uh, Kipling Station. Can we have a dumpster? I think was the issue outside, rather than people just dumping bags of garbage. Um, we did something similar, actually, at York Mills. There was, a, uh, there was a, uh, an area within the bus complex where the bags were basically uh, piled up, the bags of uh, rubbish. Uh, whilst they were um, 
while we waited for the TTC truck to come along and pick them up. And we did provide a dumpster there. We'll have a look at Kipling. Uh, I mean, the key thing for me is making sure that the rubbish is taken away quickly. Uh, so we'll have, a, we'll have a specific look, see what we can do there. If it needs a bin, we'll have a look and see if we can put one in. Otherwise, the main thing might be to just, uh, just get more punchy at having the truck come around and take it away. Uh, what else? Uh, there was a comment made around staffing on stations and um, you know, the, the attitude of staff on stations, but also um, the visibility of staff. Uh, well, watch this space on subway stations. It's going to take some time, uh, but we have a plan to radically change, actually, the staffing structure on stations in a post-presto uh, regime where you don't need to collect tokens. There's really no need to have someone sitting in a booth. Uh, so what I have in mind is a highly trained, highly motivated, professional, proactive station supervisor who will uh, own that station on a shift basis and patrol around that location to make sure that uh, customers are being looked after, that everything's safe, uh, that the information's right, the kit's all working, all the escalators and elevators working, uh, and truly be proactive in offering customer service. So it'll take a little while to fix. In the meantime, obviously, the focus is on making sure that people are doing their jobs properly in the first place, most of whom do, I would say. Uh, in any big company, you're always going to have a few, but we're very focused on customer service and that needs to continue. Uh, let me see, maybe I'll do one more. There was a comment around next bus times um, and information at bus termini. Uh, I think there's a bunch of stuff, actually. There's a lot of things that we need to do within our facilities, be they stations, uh, also bus interchanges about better information. Um, the one thing we're determined to do is uh, improve, for example, where you walk into a station and you buy a token or you pay for your, your ticket and you get down to the platform and then you find out that certain service is suspended. How annoying is that? Uh, we are going to address that. We have got a, a, a whole bunch of signs waiting, ready to go up at station entrances which will tell you what the prevailing state of the service is. So you don't find you've committed to buy only to find the service isn't running. Um, I, on that same vein, I think we do need to have a look at all of our bus terminals to see uh, what more we can do by way of monitors or whatever medium uh, so that you have got up-to-date information about next time vehicle arrival and any service preservations. Over to you, Chris. Do you want to grab a few? Um, and, and, just, yeah, and just on that, uh, actually, so we have, we have a plan to, to roll out those next vehicle arrival signs at, at almost all of our stations and, and where our buses call. So you will know at every bus terminal where it calls at a station what the next bus is, when it's coming, and actually to put signs underneath those existing signs. So that is part of the plan, but we have to address that. Um, on, on transfers being overly complicated, uh, yes, transfers can be complicated, can be complicated to explain. Um, the difficulty with that is that that complication of the transfer is because we have such a simple fare system. It is, a, it is the necessary evil of having a, a one fare system. So it, it is a complexity that is at its end because of the simplicity we have. You clearly don't need that when you move to a smart card because you rely on all of that to be solved in the back office for a customer just to travel and for the TTC to figure out what is the correct amount to charge and how that happens. So it's something that, that, that will be sorted when we move to a, to a smart card. I don't see transfers being fundamentally changed before that because it is such an integrated part of the flat fare system and the kind of token system that we use now. Um, working more closely with Go, absolutely. You know, becoming a, a more integrated transfer, transit network whether we're integrated in, in, in reality or not, but presenting that, that seamless look and that seamless feel, providing that information to, for us, for the TTC, to give information to our Go counterparts, so they can, whilst on the train, give their customers information about what's happening at the next station. We can do the same. That has to be a part of any integrated transit network. And that's really what we want to do in Toronto, is we want to be part of an integrated transit network. Um, Route supervision, uh, the, 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 leak, the roof, leaking roof at Davisville, that's a good one, and, and actually, as much as anything, it's nice to be able to say that, that it's being sorted, so a new roof has been being put on Davisville Station for the past about six months. I believe it's scheduled to be completed in June, so that, that will solve the leaking that comes down on the platform right now. So that, 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 that situation is well in hand, which is, which is great to see, because it's obviously the station that I use every day, so that's really the thing that matters. <laughs> And use of signage and symbols. Yeah, it, 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 come, it comes back to Wayfind, and it comes back actually to, to how diverse a city Toronto is. We, we, will, we will not be able to provide information on our stations in every language. 
In actual fact, it's basically impossible to provide it in more than one language. But that's where pictograms come in, and that's where international symbols come in, to give critical pieces of information to customers that may not understand English, but actually, it's also about the speed of understanding and the speed that our customers can determine where they want to go. It's far easier to look at the pictogram of an elevator and understand where to go than to read the word elevator. So it actually speeds it up for everybody. And I think that addresses everything that was on there. So some really good and interesting comments that everybody's making. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much.